Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I'm happy to talk about uh, this uh, uh, discover the hidden biases of uh, image classifier, which is a very uh, different topic than the previous two great talks. Um, so uh, Jeffrey Hinton, uh, a well-known pioneer in deep learning, said this in 2016. Um, we should stop training radiologists now. It's just completely obvious within five years, deep learning is going to be better than radiologists. Well, is he right? So exactly five years later, so in 2021, there are AI radiology models for detecting COVID-19, uh, which looks exciting for fighting against the pandemic. However, they failed catastrophically on real world data. Um, so why, what's the reason? So it turns out in the training data, most positive images contain the uh, literary mark, whereas the negative images do not. So as a result, um, the model uses it as a shortcut to make positive predictions. So a bias or the shortcut problem is the unintended decision rule that models learn from the imbalanced training data. Um, so the model explore those spurious correlation between the shortcut and ground truth label. So as a result, models are biased towards the overrepresented data with shortcuts and fail to generalize to the underrepresented one where the shortcut queue is absent. So the bias is uh, pervasive because every data set may contain spurious correlations, such as the background bias in object recognition and the language bias in visual question answering. These biases undermine AI models' robustness and safety for real-world generalization. So even more, when the bias becomes relevant to humans, it becomes a fairness issue. So for example, in this uh, visual semantic role labeling task, models are biased towards genders associating cooking with female, even if it's a man in the image. And people also find that commercial face recognition algorithm has a higher error rate for people with darker skin tones. Now, therefore it's important to address or mitigate uh, those bias problem. Uh, however, when studying the bias uh, problem literature, we look at those uh, methods and we found that all those bias methods assume that those uh, biases are pre-known. For example, in this case, uh, the uh, type of the bias, which is the background, is known. Therefore, the method is a uh, later pipeline for bias mitigation. Uh, even more so, some methods will require the bias labels. For example, not only background, but also specify the class, which is the water background, to be pre-known. Now, therefore, those methods in the literature obviously cannot mitigate the unknown type of biases. So we ask the question, right? So how to discover unknown type of biases? So this is an extremely challenging research problem because no prior knowledge of the biases. So in the following of my talk, I'm going to introduce two works. And the first work is published as a ICCV 2021 paper. Well, we model uh, the bias uh, with a, a generative model and under a generated model, we synthesize the images. For example, here, uh, for a Badger classifier, we synthesize uh, Badgers with uh, different uh, properties, like from one bed to gradually changing to two beds. And we found that that affects the uh, classifier's prediction. In other words, our model uh, is able to generate counterfactual explanation, and then we can show to human and therefore identify uh, the bias type. Now there's a limitation of this work, which is overly relying on a robust generative models. So now we also ask another question, can we identify unknown types of biases directly on the training data without a generative model? So the second part of my talk, I'm going to talk about this uh, recent ECCV 2012 paper, uh, which we trained a discoverer network that is a discriminative model that partitions the data set uh, into two groups uh, for, uh, based on the uh, uh, bias types. And therefore, uh, we can identify those biases 
and then show to humans. Uh, furthermore, in this work, we propose a mitigation pipeline that with those discovered biases, we can retrain and improve a classifier's performance so it is less biased. So everything over there are all unsupervised. So much of the thing that I'm going to talk in this uh, uh, talk is actually from my uh, PhD student, uh, Zhihen Li, who is now uh, just graduated last year and joined Amazon as a research scientist. So besides the unknown types of bias, uh, we, he also studied this unknown uh, numbers of biases. Um, and besides a discriminative uh, image uh, models, he also studied uh, the biases in generative image models. Uh, I will show you quickly uh, one slide about a generative model. So uh, we focus on a text to uh, image synthesized model. So here, uh, the given input is she is wearing a lipstick. Now, if we replace um, the uh, pronouns with uh, he with uh, she with he, he is uh, wearing lipstick. And we found that uh, those methods uh, in literature is very difficult to generate uh, you know, a correct image corresponding to this novel combination of texts. Uh, while our model uh, style T2I uh, does a better compositionality to generate a plausible image over there. Uh, but now uh, I'm going to just focus on uh, the uh, uh, discriminative models part while leaving interested uh, audience uh, to book our paper for uh, uh, generative models. So first let's look at the uh, problem setup. So we are given an image classifier that has already been trained for a certain task, such as object recognition. Now, the goal is to uh, find the bias in this given image classifier. Okay, so to illustrate this problem, let's first review a traditional pipeline for identifying the hidden biases of an image classifier. Okay, so suppose that we wanted to identify biases in a gender classifier. So it usually contains a few steps. So first step uh, is to have human experts to speculate potential biases, for example, uh, uh, skin tone. And then uh, you go ahead and collect a bunch of images and you spend time to annotate uh, different skin tone types. And the third step is you take that gender classifier and test it on different skin tone color images uh, with ground truth and you measure the performance. If there is a large gap between different types of skin tones, you say there is a bias needs to be mitigated. Now, this pipeline uh, is uh, very inefficient. It's very costly, uh, as you can see. Uh, for In the second step, uh, you need to spend time and money for collecting data and annotation. More importantly, right, so if there are unknown types of biases, biases that are novel to human experts and that are omitted in the first step, there is no chance you can recover that uh, in the later pipeline. So our idea is that, what if we can replace human experts with something that automatically enumerates potential biases? So if we look closer at what humans is enumerating, Okay, in, uh, in the case of a face image, right? So perhaps you will enumerate skin tone, hair color, hair lens, uh, wearing eyeglasses, uh, smiling. And we are questioned that, is there a way to represent these attributes or factors or variations uh, without predefinitions? So to this end, we leverage those disentangled representations in generative models. And we know that generative models learn the data distribution without supervision. Um, and in an ideal case, those disentangled representation uh, learned by a generative model would have some nice properties. For example, each latent hyperplane here represents an independent attribute, right? So in this case, uh, you have a hyperplane called a skin tone, and you can group images uh, into both sides one is a uh, uh, light skin tone uh, image and another is a dark skin tone image. Or having a different uh, hyperplane 
uh, say this is agenda hyperplane, you can uh, uh, find the images with um, you know uh, male images and female images. And if you traverse along that hyperplane vector, right, and you will be able to generate um, a, a, a sequence of images that changing with respect to one attribute while retaining other attributes are mainly unchanged. So we are wondering if we can represent that discovery, uh, bias discovery problem with hyperplanes. And once we can identify those traversal images, then we can show that as counterfactual explanation to human experts to specify what are those uh, common attributes in those images. So this uh, problem becomes uh, a um, a uh, unknown bias discovery problem becomes a latent hyperplane optimization problem that simplifies uh, this. Uh, uh, problem setup. However, uh, you might feel that this is uh, too good to be true, right? Because those disentangled representation might be imperfect. For example, maybe there are multiple variations across those generated images. So now we discovered some best practices to mitigate those issues. First is that, you know, how do you tell uh, if those variations are due to really unknown biases or they're just some noises? So this comes to our first practice. So we could sample multiple initial latent codes Z to ablate those noises, right? In other words, you have multiple those traversal images and you show that to human experts and let human to find those common variations uh, in those uh, traversal images. Now, the second practice that we found uh, is that uh, based on previous studies, uh, we found that those uh, in style game, for example, right, when those latent space are uh, transforming from Z to W space to S space, uh, the representation becomes more and more disentangled. So therefore, if we use those later representation space, potentially they can give us better results. And the last day, we found that those generative models pre-trained on different uh, data set uh, would have a better uh, 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 better results in discovering uh, you know the target classifier trained on a different data set. So possible reason is like you know those weaker spurious correlations uh, in a different data set can help mitigate your current data set. So we carry this idea to represent those unknown biases as latent hy uh, hyperplane. Okay. Um, and we model this as optimizing this unknown bias hyperplane and feed that into a generative model. So here is our pipeline. So we start with a generative model, okay? Uh, and we initialize this uh, bias hyperplane in this generative model's uh, latent space, okay? Where this uh, WB and OB are the normal vector and offsets of the hyperplane respectively. So next, we sample a sequence of those latent codes along those normal vector, and we call them uh, traversal latent codes in the latent space. And we feed them into a generative model. And that generative model synthesizes the corresponding traversal images that have different values uh, in the biases defined by that hyperplane. And we feed that into a target image classifier, and that image classifier is going to give us the predicted target attributes uh, predictions, okay? So, uh, and based on those predicted probabilities, we propose this uh, total variation loss as the objective function uh, for the uh, optimization. So uh, in a high level, um, this total variation loss maximizes the variance in those predicted target probability, right? In this case, you have a low confidence all the way to the high confidence which mean that you know, if you're changing that bias attributes, your target, uh, target classifier is going to have a lot of variation in its prediction, okay? So however, uh, this will still give us a, a trivial solution. For example, if your uh, target classifier is a age classifier and you happen to uh, get a, a bunch of traversal images that corresponds to uh, the changing of person from young to old, 
right? In other words, if your bias equals to the target attributes, that would certainly have a different prediction for different images, right? To overcome that, we propose another uh, loss term, which is uh, a orthogonalization penalty that uh, we require those uh, discovered uh, normal vectors to be very different than the target uh, uh, normal vector or any previously uh, discovered uh, normal vectors of the system. So therefore the whole optimization is a combination of the total variation loss plus a optimization penalty. And we keep optimizing this hyperplane until we find uh, the best uh, hyperplane that um, minimize the loss function. And we use those uh, obtained traversal images and we show to human experts. And the human experts is going to make some uh, educated guess of what the other uh, uh, affected bias attributes over there. Now, just to simply compare uh, this traditional bias identification pipeline and our new uh, framework with unknown bias discovery. Right, so we moved the human uh, essentially from the beginning of this whole pipeline to the very end uh, uh, of this pipeline and left the hard working uh, to our uh, algorithms. Now here we show some interesting uh, no biases discovered by our method. Um, and I will show you that, uh, you know, a bunch of images that they are coming from a high probability of cat to a low probability of cat, okay? Right. It seems like uh, the common variation among them is the shade of the fur color. When the fur color becomes darker and darker, that affects the cat probability. Now, on places data set, right? And also we found that when the number of bats changing from one to two, uh, the model has a lower confidence of the bedroom class. So for the tower class, as the image transforming from Eiffel Tower to other towers, the performance of uh, the tower classifier decreases. And another example here for the uh, bridge classifier, as the buildings in the background emerge, the performance of the bridge classifier decreases. One more example here. So this is a conference room uh, classifier. And you will see that when the table from a normal square table becoming a whole square table or from uh, the table becomes a no table, right? The prediction of the conference room decreases. So uh, this is the uh, first work that uh, uh, discovers uh, the uh, unknown biases with a uh, generative counterfactual uh, explanation uh, uh, generative model. And I will just... Now, there are some limitations. So uh, first, uh, this is uh, overly uh, relying on a generative model. When the generative model is biased, Right, so this is, uh, for example, it's, it's going to be very hard uh, to sample those underrepresented data, like here. So, um, uh, you know, uh, shows this uh, image being generated in low fidelity, and then then uh, the bias uh, uh, discovery would have a problem. And the second limitation is that uh, simply for for some domains, we don't have uh, those good enough generative models. Like the uh, in the medical domain, uh, we have fewer images. Uh, and those images are very expensive uh, to get labeled. So now we ask how to discover those uh, unknown types of biases even without a generative model. So uh, here comes our second work, uh, which is a complete pipeline uh, that includes both uh, discovery and mitigation. And the idea uh, is to uh, find those uh, different groups of images that are partitioning a training data set.
So, um, and we look at the previous um, uh, work that on uh, identifying biases from training data set. Um, and we found that uh, those uh, previous literature are mainly uh, having uh, two limitations. So first one, uh, they oftentimes uh, have uh, those inductive biases uh, to assume the bias type. For example, um, you know, if you have a CNN with small kernel, uh, they think that this uh, inductive bias captures the texture bias. Or uh, in the case of processing videos, if you use a 2D CNN, that captures the static bias in the video. Um, and a second uh, uh, definition of those biases uh, employed by the previous model uh, is that those uh, biases is usually easier uh, than the target. However, oftentimes those inductive biases or assumptions of uh, bias and the target uh, would be very hard to generalize uh, for the uh, uh, real world data. So in contrast to those previous work, uh, we follow the principle of the bias definition, right? That is the violation of a fairness criteria, right? Which has been used for a long time by traditional approaches for identifying a no bias. Now here, uh, this uh, fairness criteria measures uh, how fair a classify uh, is. Now to simply illustrate this idea, we take a traditional approach and identify a known bias with a fairness criteria. So here uh, we employ a equal opportunity uh, uh, criteria as our uh, target fairness criteria. So this compares uh, the true positive rate uh, with a uh, two groups of images uh, with the same topic la target label, but with different uh, biases. So let's use this uh, uh, example uh, where we have the gender as our target uh, prediction and hair length as our bias. Right, so now we have a gender classifier and we sample those uh, images with the same uh, target labels, which uh, is female in this example. Right. So now we feed into this uh, gender classifier and this gender classifier is going to predict the probability of um, uh, observed uh, human uh, gender. So then because we know that uh, this bias label is hair length. We separate these uh, uh, female images into two groups, one with long hair and another with short hair. And we measure uh, this uh, true positive rate between these two groups. If they do not agree with each other, if they do not have the same average probability of outputting this as a female, right? then we say uh, the hair length is the bias. Right. So the takeaway of that so the traditional approaches separate data into bias groups based on their bias labels. So bias labels has to be known before they do any kind of mitigation. Now, the challenge in our case is that we do not have any prior knowledge for those known bias. The bias is unknown in our case, right? So to solve this problem, the key idea of our method is to train a network, uh, which we call the discoverer. Um, this new network is going to take the image as the input to predict a, 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 a biased group. Okay, And based on those predicted uh, bias labels, we can separate the predictions uh, into a positive group and into a negative group. Okay, So here, similar to these uh, true positive rates in the traditional approach, we also compute the average prediction probability uh, over each group as the p-bar here. And then uh, we weight them uh, against uh, the uh, classifier's target probability. Okay, so this is basically uh, to uh, mimic uh, these uh, traditional uh, measures uh, of fairness criteria. So now uh, we use because this uh, bias is unknown, so we have to make this as our optimization problem, and this is what we have designed it. So we design a uh, equal opportunity violation which measures the differences in these two uh, groups prediction. So intuitively, uh, we want to find bias groups, right? Where the performance gap between these two subgroups is maximized. Okay. So now one trivial solution is that you can assign all images into one group 
and no images in the different other group. Well, there you can maximize this uh, equal uh, opportunity violation because the other uh, probability is zero and the other one is a very large number. So to overcome this, uh, we have this um, uh, new loss called unbalanced assignment penalty, which requires that uh, you assign roughly equal numbers of images into the two groups. Okay, so uh, with these two uh, doing the optimization, uh, we can find those uh, biased uh, attributes. And in terms of our mitigation pipeline, uh, we use this uh, uh, reweighting uh, that is basically to uh, upweight up samples from the bias group with worst performance and downweight samples from the bias group with better performance so that we can retrain our classifier to mitigate those discovered biases. Now, this is uh, becomes two part, right? So we have a uh, discoverer and then we also have a classifier. So this becomes a alternating problem. So in one hand, uh, we train those discoverer to find the biases in the classifier. And after that, uh, we train the classifier, we train the classifier to mitigate those biases found by those discoverer. Okay. And these two uh, network uh, basically are trained alternatively and we name it uh, debiasing alternative uh, alternate uh, networks or short coded as DBM. So uh, I'm going to show you just in quickly in a few slides, uh, those are the uh, found biases uh, in our uh, uh, method. So previously, uh, you know, uh, those methods uh, would be able to find, for example, the hair, co hair color or hair lens, uh, but you know, there are some unknown biases that unspecified by humans that being discovered here. Uh, so this is like the, you know, a visible hell area that uh, is a, a novel bias discovered by the method. Um, and this is another example. Uh, in the bedroom uh, classifier, we discover those, um, you know, the the size of the bed, like a twin bed, or whether it's a, a large size, like queen bed or king bed, affects the uh, prediction of the car bedroom class. And here, uh, this is discovered for predicting the restroom uh, uh, class, where well, this uh, outdoor and indoor affects uh, the prediction a lot. And we also compare uh, with other methods uh, in the literature. Um, so I'm going to uh, omit uh, those results here. So, um, and going back to this, uh, uh, you know, bias mitigation problem, uh, this is, uh, uh, two methods are addressing those unknown types of bias. And we also have work to address those uh, unknown numbers of biases and also work to address those biases in generative uh, image models. Okay, so uh, uh, that's it for my talk. Uh, it does look like we have two questions from Hugh in the Q&A, if you wanna jump into the Q&A box. Yes. So um, the first question uh, is that, um, you know, I, I, I'm I guessing this is the first work. So uh, question is that uh, this, there is a sensitivity analysis on the hyperplane to ensure uh, no single attribute has too much inference. Uh, is that fair without additional training images? Is the discriminant model uh, susceptible to overfitting? Um, so the discriminant model um, is overfitted to your training data set. That is the motivation uh, of our um, bias discovery. And we want to find that, you know, spurious correlation, okay? Now we leverage this um, uh, generative model and the assumption that those generative model would have nice property uh, following those uh, disentangled representation. So in one, um, uh, uh, hyperplane that separates uh, corresponding to uh, one attributes changing. Uh, but that is the ideal case. In the uh, actual practice, uh, you may uh, 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 have a lot of time encounter noises. So we have a uh, three best practices to help mitigate that problem. Mm -hmm.